weather. It's on everyone's minds. Globally, summers are getting hotter. Winters are getting colder. And storms are getting stronger. Scientists are plunging into the depths of our oceans and soaring up to the highest strata of our atmosphere, racing against time to crack the climate code. Today, 80% of the data used by weather forecasters comes from satellites. There are only 16 weather-specific instruments in orbit and they only see a very small part of the Earth as they move. An additional 60 research satellites supplement the data for forecasting centers. But these days, it's still hard to predict the weather. In the Arctic, the World Meteorological Association is investigating the relationship between the ocean and the atmosphere. They hope to discover why the winters across the world are getting more severe and lasting longer. Between Iceland and Greenland, they're launching equipment that's never been used before. Scientists from different areas of expertise have come together to search for proof on what they've long suspected, that Arctic warming is behind massive cooling in other regions. The main goals of the project are to find out more about the climate system in the Iceland and Greenland seas. So this is a region where the atmosphere and the ocean are tightly coupled. They talk to each other. Uh, this is a, an important component of the main ocean circulation. The Arctic is changing drastically, I mean, incredibly fast, you know. Yet it's such a data-poor region. So we need data to understand better uh, how to do things like forecast weather and, and high latitudes. Few climate studies have been done here because the extreme weather makes it challenging to set up instruments. On this mission, the scientists launch a prototype submarine drone for the first time. It's designed to compare currents on the surface to those at more than 3,000 feet deep. The underwater drone is targeting Arctic currents that govern the circulation of global currents and global weather. Surface waters cool in frigid air and become denser. Once they sink into the depths, they head towards the equator. As they move south, they mingle with warmer water and return to the surface before heading north again. Surface currents distribute heat around the planet and are a major influence on climate around the globe. This program is looking at one aspect of that big overturning loop. It's looking at where the water gets dense, where it sinks, how it sinks, and how it gets into that deep current. The meteorologists hope to find the explanation behind changes occurring in the Arctic and ultimately use the information to improve global forecasts. From underwater studies to atmospheric analysis, researchers worldwide are making progress with regard to predictions. In the UK, Supercomputers are processing data to revolutionize weather forecasting. Scientists here have divided the globe into segments and mapped virtual squares of 40 miles. The atmosphere is also organized into columns and then into horizontal layers. The more precise the segmentation, the better they can predict weather for each geographical zone. One might think that to do weather forecasting, you just have to sample the atmosphere and the evolution of that atmosphere will be enough. But the atmosphere interacts with everything, the earth, the ocean, sea ice, and even tiny particles of ozone or aerosols in the atmosphere. Our atmosphere is loaded with minute particles, both natural and man-made. 
When these particles are large, they can even absorb sunlight. To better understand the role of aerosols, researchers need a location where very different air masses converge, bringing a range of different aerosols with them. Aerosols have many sources. Some are naturally emitted into the atmosphere, such as desert dust from the great deserts around the world. Then there are aerosols that come from the oceans, what we call marine salts. There are also aerosols that come from plants, which are organic aerosols, and then there are other aerosols that stem from human activity. The scientists set up an aerosol trap in the Pyrenees at over 9,000 feet above sea level. It's designed to capture a comprehensive sampling of particles. I'm particularly interested in black carbon aerosols that come from pollution linked to human activity. Black carbon aerosols have been emitted into the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution by factories, airplanes, cars, and wood burned for heating. Research links them to global warming. They heat Earth by absorbing sunlight, which encourages the evaporation of water droplets and clouds. Because of this absorbency, black carbon is changing the temperature of the atmosphere and playing a key role in the end of life of clouds by making them disappear. Clouds help to regulate our planet's temperature but they can be responsible for catastrophic storms. Two million people around the world now live in flood zones, which are threatened by the dangers of violent storms. With every new hurricane, the same questions arise. How can we forecast the exact trajectory and predict how intense they will be? Every year, a dozen tropical storms develop above the Atlantic when the ocean temperature goes above 82 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity intensifies. These turbulent phenomena sometimes turn into hurricanes. In 2017, sea surface temperatures approached 86 degrees and Hurricane Irma was born. Hurricane Irma rapid intensification, category two hurricane. This will be a very dangerous storm and potentially could affect the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles, uh, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, potentially the East Coast and the Gulf of Mexico or Florida. That's why we need to pay attention. The National Hurricane Center in the USA was monitoring Irma very closely. The Hurricane Hunter airplane, capable of flying into the center of hurricanes, headed for Irma. The hurricane was classed as category five, the highest level, with winds measuring 186 miles per hour, one of the most powerful ever measured in the Atlantic. Despite the accuracy of the weather forecasts given by the models, the consequences of Irma were devastating. This hurricane resulted in 134 deaths and wreaked damages of $65 billion. In 2019, Dorian surpassed Irma to become the most powerful hurricane on record in the open Atlantic region with sustained winds of up to 185 miles per hour. Even when hurricane season ends, places that are thousands of miles away may ultimately be affected. The sky, the sea, earth, they are all connected when it comes to weather. The researchers studying ocean currents in the Arctic have made a huge breakthrough. Until now, Scientists had only identified a single cold current that runs along the eastern coast of Greenland. Using temperature, salinity, and speed data gathered on this expedition, 
they were able to map the path of a new undersea river, the Northern Icelandic jet stream. They believe that Arctic warming is slowing the flow of this current and altering general circulation in the oceans. This may explain the recurrence of extensive cold periods during wintertime and escalating heat waves in the summer. The climate puzzle is a giant one and a rapidly growing problem that requires many forecasters from around the world to solve. Meteorology has become an internationally collaborative affair because weather events affect everyone everywhere.